Good morning, everybody, and welcome to Coffee with Casey. We get together every Thursday at 1030 to talk about marketing strategies, what the market conditions are, um, things that will help you sell your home. So today we're going to talk about marketing. And this is the mid-mark of our first 96 series. So we have pricing strategy, which we've already done. We have how to prepare a house, which we went through last month. Now we're going to talk about marketing today. Now, <clears throat> all the great marketing in the world, all the talent Julie has, all the skill sets she has, is not going to do us any good if we don't do the first two correctly. If it's not priced right and prepared right, we're just blowing in the wind. So, you know, those are really the important ones. And now the marketing is to take it not only professionally, but beyond that and go outbound marketing of how we're going to get these listings sold. Now, the evidence of that is currently in Vienna, over 1.5 million, 75% of the homes under contract are our listings. So of the other listings, 20 listings or so, only 18% are under contract. And with us, all of ours are under contract, all of them happy within the first 96 days. So all of these steps are important. You can't leave one behind. You have to really do all of them. So today, let's talk about marketing. So uh, let me, I guess I advance it, right? All right, so today we're gonna to talk about marketing. Now, there's five real things that we need to, to look at. The first thing is, when we put it in the MLS, there are a lot of people that have stored searches in the MLS, and we need to first address that group. They're looking, they're the perfect buyers, right? Neighborhoods, right home, right price range, right everything, right? So they have a stored search that says, if this house comes on the market, let me know, okay? So that's one group we're gonna talk about. The second group is the people that have the biggest vested interest in this house doing well, all of the neighbors. Now, some people call them nosy neighbors. I love nosy neighbors. We send brochures and cards to the neighbors. Why? Because it's their friends, family, and business associates that, that they may know somebody wants to live in that neighborhood. So, you know, we want to get all the neighbors knowing about it. It's got a QR code on it. It takes you right to the property. It takes us to that beautiful website we've created. So we want to go after the neighbors. The next thing we want to do is we want to go after the renters. There's a ton of renters out there. Um, and we don't want to go after just any renter. We want to go after executive housing. We want to go after like-kind properties that are that big. In other words, we're not going to market to renters in a 1,000 square foot house when I'm selling a 5,000 square foot house. So we want to be selective of the renters that we send this out to. And the last thing we're going to do, the real powerhouse of all of this, is social media. Okay. Now I'm going to tell you how we do it. And then if Samson agents who listen to our show all the time, if they want to figure out how to do it themselves, um, they talk to the onboarders here at Samson Properties. They can put you in touch with KV Core and use similar tools to what we do. So I developed websites and all the rest of that stuff, and that's the way we do it. But KV Core has similar things that the agents at Samson can do. So I'm going to talk about how we go after all four of these. But anytime you talk marketing, any marketing, there's three main things. What's the market? What's the message? And what's my delivery system? And every time, because, you know, there's 2,800 realtors in, you know, Vienna. Well, what makes me so special? I mean, what's my message other than, hey, I'm a, I'm a realtor, you know? We got 2,800 of them. So you need a special message that's targeted and directed at the people that you want to hit, right? So we're very specific on who gets our information, okay? All right. So let's go through first. First, let's talk about the agents. <clears throat> when you put a listing in, the computer. It, you have a hit counter on the front page of your MLS for your listings. You go to the hit counter, it shows you every listing that we have, personal listings, and you can see the first one here is a property, and if you go all the way down to the bottom, there's a little button that says reverse prospect. Now when you hit reverse prospect, you're going to see all the agents, their phone numbers, their email addresses, Everybody that has a storage search for this house. So I don't want to send something out. Like I get townhouses in Alexandria sent to me, email. I, I don't have a buyer out there. Why, why would you do that? You know. So I block that agent. I never want to hear from them again. So, 
But these are people that have stored searches for that house, that specific house. Now, what happens in there is in the reverse prospect, uh, a buyer will open it up, look at it and go, hey, I like this house. I love this house. This is a possibility. The agents don't know that. We have to call them. We have to tell them. We say, hey, Mary, you have somebody that's just thinks that property is hot. It's a $1.85 million. Let me tell you all the great things about it. She goes, yeah, that's probably Mary, blah, blah, blah. She loves it. You might want to give her a call. So we're constantly working the phones from the MLS, right? Now, sometimes, 70% of the time, that's probably where your buyers are coming from. This little group right in here, okay? So we direct all of them again Every one of those people get directed to, to a website we create on the house that has all the specifics, all the great things, all the beautiful pictures, all the flamby and photography so they can see that house and make sure their client gets to that, gets to that property, okay? So the first thing we want to do in marketing is go for the low-hanging fruit. Now, a lot of agents stop at putting it in the MLS. You put it in the MLS, there's stored searches, and eh, if they don't have it, they don't have it and they never call them or they never reach out to them, but that's a valuable list of people that you need to reach out, especially the people that are saying, I love this house. You've got to get to those people. So, so we take it over and above that just on the MLS, all right? So the next thing we want to do is we want to get something out to the neighbors, why? The, the neighbors, first of all, they know Joe jo, jo and Mary, you know, they're trying to help, we're all trying to help, it's neighbors helping neighbors, here's the QR code, Everybody wants to get in the house. Everybody wants to see how cool the house is. Everybody's interested in there. So talk about vested interest. These people that we send this out to, 200, have a vested interest in that home selling at a top price, right? So this is a really great market that, that we want to hit. Um, I can't tell you, I was just at a house the other day where a person says, come on in. You know, I need you to sell my house because my parents found us a house over here and, and now we, it's on the market. So they're buying it off market. I would never allow that, right? I would not allow it. I'd put it out to everybody in America and let them see it. And then whoever can bid the highest, that's who's going to get the house. But that's okay. I'm not involved in that. But there again, you see, one of the parents found a place for their kids in their neighborhood. So business associates, friends of friends, family members, I mean, I can't tell you how many times I've sold a house to somebody's daughter, right? Because they want to be in that neighborhood. So anyways, valuable source, don't overlook them. So that's, that's the second group we want to go to. So let's talk about the third group, all the renters. So executive housing, you know, people will come into it in, in my area. It's usually Tyson's or McLean or something like that. They're in executive housing. They're here as the front person. They're working. They're looking for a house. The wife's still in Seattle. And they're doing all this research on their own. That hits every one of them. Now, Samson allows, I don't know if it's 200 or 300. I don't care. Those are the most valuable cards you have. So down there on the bottom, you'll see there's a QR code. Now, everybody that's eaten out to dinner since the pandemic knows how to use that QR code. So all I got to do is hover their phone over, boom, and it brings it right up to a badass website with all these great pictures. And so... What we want to do is, this is about going outbound. This is about getting into people's face, not waiting for them to find you, but you go to them. And, you know, and they look at it and they go, oh my gosh, this is, this is awesome. You know, so I, I think that people should do this more because A, you know, the renters a lot of times are unrepresented. They're looking, but they don't want to drag a realtor around with them all the time. Um, you invite them to the open house, you meet them at the open house, they want to see the house prior. So, you know, you can pick up buyers this way, but basically you have a lot of renters that are, that are going to buy your house. And, and let me tell you, there's 50% uh, of the buyers out there have a house to sell, right? You'll never get one of our houses if you have a house to sell. Not never, but if 95% if of the house is sell in the first weekend, I mean, those are all cash, half cash, no contingencies, no home inspection, no appraisal, no, no nothing, right? So remember, the more people we get to bid on this house, the more power we have as, as a seller and as seller's agent. The more chance we're going to have of eliminating home inspections. I, I, I mean, 
Out of the 26 or so houses that we've sold so far, I think we've had one, and that was a kick out. They kicked out on radon. Go figure. So, so we don't want a home inspection. We want to get as many people into this house bidding on the house because if the first buyer walks on you, you need to have a second or third or fourth buyer standing by because you don't want to go back on the market. If you do go back on the market, you've lost 50 to 100,000 bucks. At, at our level, you lost 50 to 100,000 dollars. So, so we want to really, the part of this marketing is to get everybody in, as many people in that front door as you can possibly get in that front door, let them bid it out and have multiple buyers. This is a pool you cannot ignore. You have to go after the renters, send them their cards. Uh, Samson does it for free, which is great, but make sure you have that QR code. Because what we talked about in the last show was preparing the home, which included flambient photography, it included um, its own custom website. Well, having that custom website is where you send everybody to. I mean, I'm not gonna say, hey, look at this great house. I'm gonna say, look at this great house. Here's a QR code. You can go right to it and see all the benefits of the house, right? So, and again, that is where you need to talk to Samson Properties, the KV Core, which is available to all agents. You can produce your own websites. It does have a link that you can set a QR code to that link on that house. So if you're not currently doing it, Samson Properties has, just talk to the onboarding people here and they'll help you out with that, okay? So these are the renters um, sitting there with cash, no contingencies, powerful group. Here comes, the, here comes the knockout punch, okay? So I think everybody needs to have their own marketing director or share a marketing director with somebody, right? And you have your own brand, your own social media stuff. If, if you as a realtor have to do, I could never do any of this. I mean, Julie's a professional. She's a genius at this. So you almost have to be working with somebody that, that knows how to do this marketing. So let's take this house, for example. So this house was seen by 14,000 people, okay? What we do is we'll, we'll use a thing called geofencing and Google ads, and we use a lot of hash mark, uh, hashtags, hashtags, I guess. So Julie targets the buyers that are looking for a house like this, and they're not looking in Vienna. This particular house, no MLS produced nothing. There was nobody looking at the house. There was no favorites. There was no anything. So I'm thinking this house is not going to make it. You know, we need to get down to 1.5 or 1.55. Then a guy calls me up and he goes, hey man, where's Vienna, Virginia? And I'm like, well, it's in Northern Virginia. And he says, where is it around McLean? I said, we're next door to McLean. And he goes, gosh darn it. I, I'm, I've been looking at McLean for a year, I can't find what I want. That's the house I want. He's in a penthouse in New York City. He goes, I, I went online this morning. I'm going through my news. I went through the Wall Street Journal, and boom, there it was. And it was like, I love that house. And he looked at it and said, it's in Vienna, Virginia. And he, so you know, he calls me up, and he's like, this is a damn miracle. I'm like, no, it's not. <laughs> uh, no, it ain't a miracle, man. It's Google Ads. They found your ass. You were looking at McLean. And we dragged you to Vienna. And that's what we do. We pull people from Arlington, McLean, Great Falls, pull them into Vienna. If you're in Oakton, you're pulling from Vienna to Oakton because a lot of people start looking in Vienna and they end up in Oakton. Why? It's $150,000 cheaper in Oakton. So, and there's more land. So, you know, the key to social media is we're trying to get people to come to, whether it's Centerville, so if I'm in Centerville, then I'm trying to get people from Oak Hill and Oakton and Vienna to come out to Centerville. Just get on the highway. It's 10, more, 10 miles and you can buy twice the house, right? So, you know, the goal is wherever my property is. Let's say you're in, um, I don't know, Gaithersburg, right? So go find people that are, you know, 20 minutes closer to D.C. And, and your house is a lot cheaper than Montgomery County. So come on out to Gaithersburg, right? Cut your deal. So, so the key to marketing, I think, of ours when you're going outbound is we are not trying to bank on the MLS or the people that are looking at the house. We're going that way. And we're going to people that are looking at a house. And, and again, we're going to launch a $2.15 million house. And, 
And I'm going after people looking at $2.5 million houses in McLean going, you know, you get the same house for 2.1. You just come out here, you know, same size, space, feature, function, everything. It's just come over to Vienna and you save all this money. So, you know, the, the key, I think, to marketing is, is getting people from other places to come to your, your town. Now, 14,000 people saw this thing. And one of them called me up. He got on a plane. He came down here. He wrote us a check, $1.6 million on the button. I had one buyer. I had one buyer. So you never know where that one buyer is coming from. Could be a renter. It could be a... a you know, it could be somebody coming out of the MLS. It could be one of the neighbor's kids. It could be somebody online. It could be somebody looking at McLean. It could be everything. But the protocol is you do it all on every listing, regardless of the price. That's just what we do. And that's, you, you have a, a protocol for pricing. You have a protocol for preparing a house. You have a protocol for marketing. Now, we have sellers that say, I'm not doing anything. Uh, it looks fine. No, it doesn't look fine. It doesn't look fine. Or uh, it's, it's worth $1.75 million. It's like, no, it's worth $1.4 million. You know, it's not worth $1.75 million. So there's a protocol, and I've always said that the best listing you take is the one you don't take because most sellers are reasonable. They have beautiful homes. They set their house up. They'll do what you ask. They'll prepare the house. And then you have about 10% that just won't, and, and every time... That's 90% of the, of the nightmare. The home won't sell. They want to know why it's not selling. What am I doing wrong? It's like, well, I told you, told you to price it right. Told you to fix it up. You don't want to do either one of those. So, so I would just say, I know it's hard that we have limited amount of listings, that, uh, opportunities. But if you're going to put your name on a house, then it's got to be prepared correctly. right? If you're going to put your name on a house, it's got to look right. It's got to be priced correctly. It's got to have its home inspection done. And in preparing the home, I talked about the home inspection, which is 100% critical in where we're about to go. So right now it is May of 2023. Not many home inspections going on, not for us, because we do a pre-home inspection. I will tell you in, the, in June, July, August, September of last year, there was a wave. Everybody wanted a home inspection. So we, you know, we got to prepare for that again. Why do we do so much marketing? Because we need as many bodies in the ship as possible. We need as many people bidding on this house as possible. So, so in preparing the house, one other thing. I didn't talk last time in preparing the house about getting any radon or worrying about radon. For $135, you can get a radon test, right? So as you're in the listing appointment and you're talking to the seller with a listing appointment, you put the test kit down in the basement. By the time you're done with your by the time you're done with your listing appointment, you can tell them whether they're blowing a 9.5 or a 2.0, right? So, so it's part of the process about anything that could kill this transaction, we have to get in front of it. Home inspections, good, get a pre-inspection. Radon, good, get a pre-radon. That doesn't cost anything. Just put it in the basement and you're good to go. Um, make sure you, you know, do the preparation of the house that we have to. Then when these people walk in the house, now it's ready to go. Now you don't, you don't need 40 people to love a house that's not ready. If, if the house is really nice and set up and you're priced right and everything, then one out of two people that walk in that house are going to want to buy it. So our job is easier by doing step one and step two. When we get to step three, then it's just a function of let's get as many people in the door and let's field contracts. Okay? So, so this is the marketing section of it. It's very, very critical that we get this done. But the next part of this is, and we'll talk about this the next time, is the predictive analysis once we see that. So we have all these people coming into the house. Master mouth, 20 showings, 25 showings set up. But before we do that, we need to know, are we going to have these people come in the house? Did the marketing work? Did the marketing work? How many showings do I have? One, we're overpriced. We're, we screwed up. We got to drop the price. Well, we've got statistics that show every time we drop the price because of a predictive analysis, we double the, the value. In other words, we drop at 50, we make an average of $93,000. But as realtors, you can't stick your head in the ground on anything. You have to be 
you have to just man up and just say, hey, man, this house needs paint. Now, this is where partnerships help when you're talking about this marketing. So in the marketing side, I have a professional person that markets the house. Julie, and I always tell everybody, you got it. You know, you got to work with professionals if you want to do this right. So on this marketing side, Julie does it. Michelle. Michelle takes every person with every person within 300 houses of this and pulls email addresses on them, right? We use Red X. I don't know if any of you use Red X, but you can use Red X. You can pull the emails and you can send that house, that ad to 300 neighbors in that area. Now, if you keep a database and I've got the emails of all these people that in, in this quadrant that we're looking at this house, or you know the neighbors of this house, well, what happens when I get one here? So I do a, a quadrant here and there. So I send it out to both of them. So I have a professional that's set up just on databases to make sure that when this house goes on, we can get it an email address to this group and emails to that group, right? They're like kind groups, right? Or we could have one where these were all the neighbors in a $1.3 million neighborhood and I'm selling a $1.7 million house. Wouldn't they be a great group to send an email directly to the people that live in $1.3 million houses that I'm selling a $2 million house or a $1.7 million house? Or if you got a 850,000, wouldn't it be great to have all the email addresses of the people that were in the $650,000 segment? Because people in um, places like Dominion Valley, Piedmont, uh, Virginia Run, they're moving up and down the neighborhood. Oh, I got kids, I gotta get a bigger house. Oh, kids are gone, I'm gonna get a smaller house. But they don't leave the neighborhood. Haymarket, those people stay in Haymarket. They're not going anywhere, right? So they're moving up and down based on their family size. They get a divorce, boom, gonna need some smaller houses, right? Two of them. So, you know, when we're, when we're dealing with marketing, You've got to think very carefully about who am I trying to get. And if I'm trying to get $1.3 million people that love Vienna and their kids are in Vienna Elementary and going to Madison High School, if I could take that group and say you could get a bigger house and your kids don't leave the school, they're in the same school system, if you can, but, but you got to buy a bigger house. How many people are sitting in a house going, I need a bigger house, right? I got kids. I got one kid. I got two kids. I got three kids. Holy shit, a fourth kid showed up. Now you need a bigger house, right? They don't, they're not buying up because they want to. They're buying up because they need to, right? So again, you know, a great fishing ground for us is Arlington Homes that have 14 to 1,800 square feet. They cost $1.2 million in Arlington. Well, when I put up a $1.6 million house that's 4,200 square feet, who are the first people I'm going to tell? Those guys. You're getting an email from me. Because I know it's cool and it's hip to live in Arlington, but it's awful small. And, and I would say that the train that goes from Arlington to Vienna is a big train with a lot of seats, right? So know who the group is, right? Market, message, delivery system. So in that case, the market is smaller homes in Arlington to try and get them to come out to Vienna. What's my message? Look at how big and beautiful this house is. Here's a QR code. Tap on it. You can see it. Come on out to Vienna. You got 4,200 square feet. And you're only going up two or $300,000 over the price, right? So, so market, message, delivery system. Whether it's email or whether it's cards or whether it's social media, whether it's an ad on social media, whether it's a boosted ad on social media. Let me show you one thing. Let me show you something. Can you throw that up on the big, on the big uh, screen so people can see it? So I don't know if you can see this, but this is the, uh, every one of those orange lines you see there, that's what happens when it's boosted. If it's not boosted, there's a little tiny sliver, little baby sliver. You can't see it because it's too small. On each one of those, that's called organic. So when you put something in your uh, computer, right, in your social media, the organic is 50 showings. But when you boost it, it's thousands of showings and thousands of showings. So can you see how each one of those, that orange line is the, is the people that boosted it. Now, if you can see to the right of that, 
there's gray lines. <coughs> Those are the people that went to the website, the top gray line, which is the big one, like this, they click through to the website. The bottom little tiny sliver, those are the people that were organic that went through the website. So do you think our money is better spent on that, on boosting these things? So every house has a budget. And if I don't have enough people, then I just up the budget. Lower the price, up the budget, and relaunch it, right? But, <coughs> you know, you can see that the power of, I mean, it's, it's almost 20 to 1. I think it's around 20 to 1, the people that will see it that you boost it to over organic, okay? So if you're not boosting your ads, this is, this is a powerful tool. All right, now this is the seller sharing tree, okay? And, and this, is a, this is really something we work hard to, to get the sellers to do. If they're involved in Facebook or Instagram, or their kids, or anybody they know is involved with Facebook or Instagram, share it. Because the 1,500 people that know John and Mary, know their house is up on the market, are they, they're their friends. They're trying to help. And they ask out and say, can you please share this to your friends? And it's right there on the thing. Please share. Well, everybody has, let's say, an average of 1,000 to 1,500 friends, right? So what if you got five, six, seven, eight people that are involved in Facebook to start sharing it, right? Now we've got 10,000 people who know who you are. Now they may not know who you are, but whoever shared it to them, they know who they are, right? So, so if every one of you, you know, started shooting it out, right? Imagine the tentacles this thing has when we're getting out there. So, um, are all sellers that are 65 years old, are all of them on Facebook? Nah, some of them are. Some of them are really good. Some of them are about business and things like that. And the people that know how to use this for business, the sellers, and again, when we're dealing with a seller, there, you have to use tactical empathy. And tactical empathy means I need to know who you are. I need to know what you do. I need to know everything about you. What do you do in your job? Are you a marketing person? Are you a Facebook person? Are you an Instagram person? You know, no, I'm not. Okay, then we won't talk about it. Are your kids? Do your kids get on Instagram? Because we got Instagram stuff too, right? So for every seller, we send them the tree and say, here's a link to your Instagram, your Facebook, and what else? Twitter, or LinkedIn, LinkedIn, right? And they just click on that. It takes up the thing and they hit share and they share it to all their friends. Very simple. And then I say, forward this to your kids, to your close friends, you know, to anybody you know that's active on Facebook. Oh, Mary's active on Facebook. Then ship it to Mary. Let's get her doing it. You know, but people want to help people, you know. So the whole thing about this is, again, if our goal is to get as many people in the front door as possible and use as many arms as we possibly can. And that's a protocol for every single house. Does it work? 24 out of 24 houses sold in the first week, our first 96 hours. Ah. In a market... And Donnie and Danny, and I drives me crazy when they say that. Oh, that's Vienna. Oh, everything's good in Vienna. Man, anybody can anybody can sell a house in Vienna. Oh, that's easy. 18% of the houses in Vienna are under contract. 18%, other than mine. 18%. And the rest of them are at 90, 39 days on the market. And you're going to start seeing a lot of them kick out and withdraw. And you know, the withdrawal rate in the summertime goes like this, right? So uh, it ain't that easy. So the test market we're in is not like the easiest test market of all time. And it's not as if there aren't any good realtors there. They're really good. I mean, good looking, you know, I mean, <laughs> shit, I'd want to, I'd want to list with some of them. I mean, they can't sell anything, but I'll list with them. They look great. You know, you know, it comes to a fat guy. Hey, I want to sell your house. And they look at me and go, you must be really good, man. Cause you don't get them for your looks. So, Anyway, that's why I bring a good-looking daughter or a good-looking nephew or something else with me at the time. But, um, but so it's not, it's not an easy market. It's a hard market. 
right? And a lot of markets, and, and when you're talking with your sellers and you're going to talk to the sellers, um, there's a lot of money at stake. I run market snapshots every Tuesday and every Friday. And I look at all houses in a market and I can see how much they sell for over their assessed value. And the difference at the $1.5 million level is the best one is selling for 300,000 less than the worst one. So if they overprice, underprepare, yada, 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 let it sit on the market, go into the death spiral, then they could get 300,000 less than the person that did it right. So what's at stake? I would say at least 12% of the value of that house. So um, up or down, up or down, that you get people bid. Um, and we'll talk about this on the contract negotiation section. But, you know, people come in, it's a $1.7 million house, get an offer for 171, offer for 175, offer for 183. There's a lot of money at stake. There's a lot of money at stake. So from the marketing side of this, let's have a protocol together where we do it all for everyone. If you have to partner up with somebody that does marketing for you, then do it. It's good money spent. I can tell you it will give your sellers uh, the confidence that um, you're not working this alone, that you do work with professionals, that your stuff does look great. Um, and, and that's what you got to get. Because I will tell you what, most people walk in that door don't have anything close to this. Nothing close. They don't even know what geofencing is. They don't know what Google ads are. They don't know about boosting ads. They don't know about the value of going after and the QR codes and the websites and all that stuff. So, so you've got to, um, you know, when I walk into a seller, I know in my mind that if I fail and they go with this other agent who I know will overprice it or underprepare it or do whatever, I know it's going to cost one hundred fifty, two hundred thousand dollars. I know it's at stake. So, you know, I kind of have to do everything in my power to not let them make that mistake. Because the easiest thing for a seller to do is to say, well, I want 1.8. It's worth 1.65. I want 1.8. And I'm not doing anything. Yeah, that's a great idea. Let's go 1.8 and don't do anything. Because they want the listing, right? And it takes a lot of guts to say, no. Nah, you're going to paint this 6,500 square foot. We recommend you paint this 6,500 square foot house. It's yellow. Yellow doesn't sell. And then how many of us have heard this? I just painted this house. But they're not current colors. They don't show up well. They make it look older. So I don't have the guts to do this, but Morgan does. Billy does. Kelly does. I mean, I'm like, please don't say it. Please don't say it. She's like, oh, we got to paint this house. <laughs> oh, my God. But every time, because to be honest with you, I'm tired. I don't have the energy to you know, do all that stuff. But they do. And they, they take great pride that that house has got to look right. So it takes a lot of guts to tell a seller that says, I just painted my house. I'm not painting it again, to say it has to be painted. And then, you know. You know, as we like to say, scoreboard, you know, just look at the scoreboard. Scoreboards tells all, right? So if those houses are all selling at this premiums at 80,000 80, over the next highest offer, 140,000 over list price, that will get you the listing. That will get you the respect of the other sellers. So I know it's hard. I know it's difficult. But, and, and I don't see it. I mean, my biggest competitors are Lillian Jorgensen, Casey Morgano, old you know, Pat Stack, right? We don't see it. It looks fine to us because we're 65. But I'm not the buyer. She's the buyer. And he's the buyer, right? The 30-somethings are the buyers. They see it. Clear as a bell, they see it. So that's why I think I give a lot of credit that when they came in and they started preparing the houses the way the 30-somethings want it, want it, our sales went up, our days on market went down, the prices went up, and, and it just started to snowball. Not me, them, right? So anyways, that is the marketing side of it. So we've got pricing strategy you can look at. We've got the preparing the house, which was last month. This is the marketing. Next week is the critical one. That is predictive analysis. And the predictive analysis is like looking both ways when to make sure the bus isn't coming. Because in this market, 
somebody's going to get hit by the bus and somebody's going to drive the bus. And if you don't know, if you go out blind and all of a sudden you hit the market and nobody shows up, you got a problem. And you can't find that out after you've launched the listing. You have to find that out before you've launched the listing. So, so that's, that's all about the predictive analysis. Half of the houses we do don't survive the predictive analysis. They get dropped down $50,000. Um, they get relaunched. And then the average sales price is 93,000 over the list price. So we drop it 50, it makes 93. And I will guarantee you that had we not dropped the 50, we weren't getting that list price. We were not gonna get it. Because if nobody's coming, if you have one showing and you have no favorites, no one's coming. But it's amazing if you can get down, you can find that buyer pool all of a sudden. Here we go. Okay. All right. So thank you for listening. This has been Coffee with Casey, where we come to you every Thursday at 1030. Thank you. And uh, you can see me next, next week. Um, we'll get back to market conditions today. We we're doing mostly marketing. But you can reach me at 703-508-2535 or Casey at CaseySampson.com. Thanks for listening. We'll see you next week. Thank you.